Wasail, beautiful people. I'm under a fig tree. Um, and when I was in Lavre, that was the Valley of the Figs. And I've been kind of looking into the history of the fig and humankind. And they have a very interconnected life in many ways. Um, about 750 different fig trees. Um, and they've been providing for us and the natural world for a very long time. But they're a very unique and specialised plant and they turn up a lot in most major religions as well. Just being integral to life. And so yesterday when I did the reading just down here in the, the water sluice area, Reem noticed, hello Reem, uh, that the fig tree above the sluice gate, she said, had a very powerful, like, over spirit energy. And I, I chuckled because I'm very aware that this fig tree sort of holds the spirit of place. It's key to the energies of this area. And it's such a magnificent species. And it's not a giant tree as yet it's quite small still but the abundance the profusion of figs all over is just incredible look i'm actually going to pick one thank you tree and i'm going to show you all just look at the inside of that it's just gorgeous and in true Reem style, I'm imbibing the energy of the tree to connect him for the reading, just like Reem does with the runes. And I know, Reem, you really wanted that fig. I'm so sorry I can't pass you one through the screen. So, figs. When I was in Al Jazeera before leaving, I passed a fig tree and I could smell Philosikos, the diptych fig perfume that I used to enjoy wearing. And yet, when I approached the fig tree, I couldn't smell it. It was a very heady, thick smell. Incredibly beautiful and sweet. And you kind of go, where are the fig flowers? And then you go, oh, hang on, figs don't have flowers. The fruit is the flower. It's inside the fig are all the stamen and they're waiting for specialised wasps to uh, germinate them by going inside. So they really are a completely fascinating plant. And I've got loads of notes, but I thought instead of just reading out a long list of notes, let's just see... What energies come up through the cards and see if they reference the stories. I just, I'm curious about this lagoon of willful resistance as a, <coughs> as an opening frequency. So let's go with the runes. Beautiful, beautiful, honestly beautiful, beautiful, really so beautiful. I mean, maybe I should have done this reading naked with just a fig leaf <laughs> covering me by Adam and Eve. So, really interesting. First card is Shadows. So, I'm immediately drawn to the story of Alexander the Great. So let me just turn the page to find that one. So in 326 BCE, before the Common Era, Alexander the Great arrives in India and enjoys the shade of a fig tree. I'm being told that although we look at this card as shadows, they're wanting me to say that the the shadows are the shade that give us comfort from too much light. You know, it's a little bit like 
being on a spiritual journey of all love and light and rainbow farts but how it's important to step out of the light because we have to have the contrast we have to have the shade i kind of thought that leaf shade might come up but for the moment we're dealing with shadows so the idea of the protection that is available mm, yeah i'm gonna do another rune with it before we move on would you like to add another rune i would like to add two runes So beautiful. So we've got the rune that came out the other day that's still nameless, but I've been looking into the Anglo-Saxon words for rune. Uh, I, I hold that thought. They're showing me an energetic movement between shadows and ligure, which we had just now at the beginning. Um, so the idea of the symbol is this Lagur without this part and how the emotional bleed card has that dash and there's some kind of movement to coming within yourself so that you stop emotionally bleeding when you settle down and meditate with a tree so now they're talking about buddha in this card enlightenment see that's an energy that this has and I'm looking at several words for this card um, there is one that I'm quite fascinated by oh it feels like that's what they're telling me this has to be called which is Ophelugu Ophelugu which means like an overcoat an overmantle but also uh, an because Lugu can be like a womb it can be a space of protection that you return to in your meditative state. Um, Ophelugu is when you reach to match an energetic deity. Just as I could reach and match the energetic nature of this tree, you can do that with deities, with animal spirits. And we know that this is about reaching a mirroring point. And being gifted with a matching energetic mantle where you and the thing that you're approaching becomes one energy but it is saying it has to be done with shadows within shade within a knowledge of darkness and that's again this message that air epoch earth magic relies on dark and light as opposed to old earth magic that could be just one aspect it's the space in between that reaches you into this area there's another word um, which i quite like which is r-y-f-t which is rift which is a cape or a cloak that you wear and there's something about the rift meaning that there's something that's a tear in the fabric of time something that brings you into a different frequency somehow but that it's not something you stay in permanently you don't become the god energy you have a moment where you match you perform the rite the ritual the desire that you have in that frequency to heal whatever it is and then you take the mantle off and then the other card we have is lifruma the source of life and the closeness of these energetically is much nearer than earlier when i looked at going from one space to the other with the lagur sign but there's something about you've got to reset everything because the space in between this has the line on the horizontal to meet something as its match whereas both of these are caught between heaven and earth consciousness and physicality so let's talk a little bit briefly about the buddha story so it begins with a bodhi tree and the bodhi tree is another form of um ficus tree and Buddha sits underneath the ficus and goes on his long meditation and reaches enlightenment. 
and so the banyan tree which can be quite a large ancient tree um, has been followed by various different religions not just Buddhists but also by Hindus and Jains for over 2,000 years um, so there was a king who was an Indian emperor who was called Ashoka the Great and he removed a branch from the famous Bodhi tree that Buddha sat beneath and he bestowed upon the, the branch that he cut kingship and then he planted it in a solid gold pot and then at some point it was so precious to him that he decided because it was so precious to him he would gift it to the king of Sri Lanka and so he I guess it was Salon at the time um, and so he sends it down the mountains along the Ganges and then when it arrives in the Bay of Bengal it is transported on board a ship by his daughter and taken to Sri Lanka as a sacred tree and this is the Ficus religiosa so another form of the tree um, and there's something else about that that I need to tell you so the the banyan is another form of these huge Indian ficus trees unlike the Bodhi tree and this one's the ficus, ficus bengalasia bengalensia bengalensia and this one is so large that a single tree is like a forest so there's something about this energy of the tree being larger than the concept that we allow even though this is a small tree the energy behind the tree encoded in its dna is something far grander so we'll come back to that one because i thought it was the same tree and it isn't there's a lot of fig trees so let's go to the mystical shaman and buddha and this need to connect somehow with the tree What would you like to add please fig tree there's a couple of wasps over there and they're telling me the importance of wasps as the pollinators of the tree but hopefully that will come out in a minute and we can talk about it we want cards we don't want just a long description of the beauty of a fig i mean it's very lovely but we want some messages please beautiful fig tree What would you like to tell us? What would you like to tell us? I think it's just giving us the one card for the moment. Oh, no, there's the second. So, fig trees. Luminous warrior card. So, somehow they're talking about a sacral healing the 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 notion of the sacral but also a heart healing so the very presence of a fig creates an energetic frequency sound wave energetic space that's very much to do with a regeneration a, a recreation a, it's a very emotional, stable tree. Um, the shade of the tree, because we are dealing constantly about the shadows with the Alexander the Great re uh, reference, to the notion that the tree protects. The tree is recently being replanted in places where logging has taken its toll on the earth and it's allowing the regeneration of rainforests in tropical climates also uh krakatoa krakatoa erupted in blah, 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 blah. i have to find it it's 18 something where's krakatoa 1883 and all life on the island was purged and yet the fig tree grew on the bare lava and it seeds the shade 
the moisture pulling magic to give the whole forest a chance to regrow so really powerful frequencies and there's a completion energy there's an energy of coming it's come mm. so it's like um completing a relationship with ourselves um with the tree um reaching out to the natural world reaching out to a fig tree isn't just about that energy of protection but it's an energy of um, I'm finding it difficult to give a word because I want to naturally say uh, a growth a spiritual growth or an ascension sense but they don't want me to use those words an elevation a consciousness elevation um, that comes from interacting with a tree any tree in its entirety if you have a tree near you that you can fall in love with and just watch its seasonal changes you will grow your luminous warrior will become much more apparent within you so let's go to the Egyptians with these shadows So I'm being shown these two to do with this notion of the light and the dark and the figures are being reminded of how we've forgotten to celebrate the darkness even uh, you know to the extent that we with the advent of electric lighting and we did a whole series back in August or September around the invention of electric lightings and how it changed society but it's a reminder of how light pollution too much light including in our own spiritual practices too much light muddies the waters and this is a 13 frequency it's an eight and a five and so we need to learn to worship our shadows again not to elevate them above the light but to bring them into balance to bring them into that over lagoon to bring them into an emotional over energy higher frequency that we can peek into peek behind the curtain the veil and we also have this wonderful card of spirit Just how attaching ourselves to the spirit of place, tuning our spirit to the spirit of a tree, tuning our focus into a wasp as it flies around. Now wasps are the things that pollinate fig trees and all fig trees have created very specialist wasps to climb inside and to pollinate the plants so that they will grow into a full fig with the seeds in the figs themselves feed something like 1200 different species and a tenth of all birds feed on figs humans feed on figs chimps feed on figs chimps are seen using the bark and the leaves when they've got slight illnesses to help cure themselves of things so there's a regenerative restorative energy to not just consuming the plant but consuming its life force and that's not in a way where you're stealing from it it's willing to change your frequency if you work with it if you want to be at one with the fig so we're going to go back to the runes and see what other energies wish to come forwards it's very warm under here it's very warm out but because I'm using the figs shade the shadows it's keeping me just a little bit cooler 
what else would you like to tell us about awesome figs? Well, oh, that's a lot. So, the main card coming out alone is Gatekeeper, which is to be in the present, to deal with your past and to deal with unblocking the future because of your bad thought patterns of the past to come into the now. And then the three cards working with that, we have Oak. Oak is about the colours of the wind, the changes of frequency, adaptations, being able to adapt. Oh, you see now, that's interesting. So they're talking now about how the specialization of the fig trees to specific wasps has always served their purpose, but it's not always useful because sometimes things need a helping hand. So in Egypt, let me find the reference. In Egypt, they discovered that they loved the Ficus sycamorus. And they imported it and planted it in places where there were no wasps capable of pollinating it so that the fruits would be in abundance to eat. And so they discovered through accident or through some kind of esoteric knowledge that if they cut into the growing bud, the tree believed that it had been pollinated somehow in some form of trickery and it grew the fruits that could then be consumed. So there's something about us learning from a fig how to adapt. Because I'm immediately being told that the fig knew it wasn't pollinated because it would know because it knows that it's received the pollination moment but somehow it was willing to adapt for its survival in this new environment and then we have flursa flow to to reach a point where we place ourselves in the present it really is about and and grow up they're saying we have to grow up and then we have man, Madir, the self. We have to plant our new day into the ground. There's something about the fluidity of energetic movement between this. All we need to do is just take this and slide it down to the bottom to create this. But it's like saying there isn't much that needs to be done in terms of dealing with how we adapt. We can always adapt at any moment if we choose to adapt, but it's whether we choose to adapt. Interesting. So, what else would you like to say? What else would we like to say? Flow, 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 flow. <laughs> Adapt, flow, change, embrace change. It's Uranian energy. So, what else would you like to say? The Time Master. Now, to be in the flow of the present is to be the time master because to flow in the present, the time master has dealt with combining past, present and future into a single energy flow that moves in the now. To flow in, both in and out of time. And then we've got Pachamama. And this is almost like a form of earthly limitless potential that the luminous warrior can complete 
which is weird because if it's limitless how do you complete it but it's kind of like you can complete the next stage of your growth but the next stage of your growth involves the natural world and we're sitting here with a fig tree because of its uniqueness okay so now they're talking to me about the rubber plant because the rubber plant is a fig tree that's called ficus elasticus and that's where we get latex from um, and it's talking about how that fig is able to stretch and bend so it's bringing the fluidity the change of direction that is promised from the ash tree or the oak tree uh, which is about stability to build foundations so let's put a few Greek Greek Egyptians down The magic works through you. Scarab beetle. There's a lot of fives turning up. The luminous warrior. The magic of the luminous warrior works through you. It can only work through you. It works through your sacral. But you have to change your frequency to do that. You have to deal with... I'm sure there was another five somewhere that I spotted. Oh, here. Change the light to include the darkness. And, and that is an eight, which is about change. So there's something very powerful about changing frequency, adaptability. That's a little bit like turning around in the spiritual cul-de-sac. So maybe the fig tree was delivering that message and this is part two to what goes on. You're an open book. This is the blank... This is the page to be written. This is the newness. This is all the wonders that are coming towards you. <sighs> She's back, they're back. Ophelagur, connect to the higher expression of nature connect to the higher expression of an animal spirit connect to the higher dimensional deities but connect because that's where you will reconnect your shadows into a source of light energy that's balanced this doesn't flow you don't get flursa you don't get to flow without both aspects. I've got a fly right on my nose. So obviously that's a very, you need to nose that. I've been getting a lot of them sitting on my third eye since I arrived here, my little spirit totem flies. So what would you like to end with Mr. Fig Tree or Mrs. Fig Tree? Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey with nature. Ah, oh, it's at an 11, it's two and nine. It's, this is earth grid energy. So let's put a rune with that earth grid energy. Let's get a rune with the earth grid energy. Looks like we've got two. Oh. <laughs> this is the day of doubles. The journey, raid, the journey. <laughs> and it's it finishes with birthright. And energetically, it's drawing me to this. What's the difference between the R and the Ethel? Well, really, that you just need to pull that out and pull that out. There's not much that needs to be done to reach a point of Othelagu. So that you can flow into your birthright. This is also birch tree. Uh, mm, it might not be actually, they're saying. 
now that I've said that. Um, so let's just ask for a Egyptian. Go on a journey with nature. Go on a journey with nature. It's like the journey with nature is what will write the next chapter of your life. That's, that's what you're doing when you connect with the natural world. You're writing a new chapter for your divine pathway forwards. So, that's a lovely little uh, energy. Thank you, Fig Tree. And thank you for all the beautiful figs that you've been giving us. And I'm going to make some fig bread at some point to honour the mill with its key tree that offers its figs so anyway it looks like the signals getting a bit kind of magic with purple <laughs> we've got that line coming uh, that way that purple third eye light that appears occasionally when i seem to do readings involving trees so uh I'm being wrapped in third eye energy again. I feel like I'm wrapped completely in third eye energy the whole time I'm here. It's the most magical experience. And once again, I want to thank all of you for making it possible. Here comes another wasp. Do you want to point a little appearance, wasp? Just to show that you really are the friend of the fig. No, he's gone. So anyway, love wasps. Don't think they've got no point to them. Wasps are so important to fig trees being here. So love a wasp, say hi to a wasp today if you see one. I say all beautiful people and I'll see you again very soon.